Will Rogers once said, half of our life is spent trying to find something to do with the time we have rushed through life trying to save. His comment kind of illustrates the fact that mankind doesn't really understand the purpose of time. You know, you can send me all of the time management courses, TED Talks, daytime planners you have to buy into for thousands of dollars, but none of those perceive time as God does. And none of them can answer the bigger question of what is the purpose of time? Because you know, mankind's attempts to master and understand time are not based on a spiritual understanding. All of those self-help things trying to help time management are not going to base or give you any basis without that spiritual understanding. You know, many time management gurus will posit that asking the question, are you making time for what is important? And they can go on to, vis to list various techniques, ways to structure your daily life in trying to achieve that goal. But spiritually speaking, all of those are short-sighted and are simply passing pleasures. None leading to true spiritual change unless, unless we have our minds opened to understanding of spiritual matters. Because time management is key for a Christian. It's part of our development as spiritual babes turning into spiritual children. But only God can help us understand how we should be managing our time. And it goes along with what this day even shows that at this time in God's plan, we'll be nearing what we understand, maybe the end of physical life and us and you know mankind, all that have been given this chance to understand God will be changed and will be given the chance to turn into spirit. So the one first question I want to ask as we try to understand time is how does God perceive time? What does he think of this instrument? And we can begin by answering that question by trying to understand God's nature. So we know that God's nature is without beginning and it is without end. Isaiah 46, to begin with. Isaiah 46, and beginning in verse 9. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. There is none like God. He can't be compared in the physical realm. And God is unrestricted by all secession of time. Time, in fact, began when God spoke it to be so when the universe was created, when physical matter became into existence by God's word, that is when time, as we understand it, began. Because God has no beginning, because he has no end, he is not subject to time. Second Peter 3, to understand more about God's nature, Second Peter 3, beginning in verse 8. But, beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, 
not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Time means something different to God. And this is how, as humans, we try to express it, that a thousand years to us is but a day. Time to God means something completely different. And even with that, with that great amount of time that can pass, what seems like generations after generations in our time, even with all of that, as quickly as it might pass, God is not forgetting us. He is not slack in what he has promised his people and the redemption that he is leading us towards. Psalm 102, starting at verse 25. Psalm 102 and verse 25. Of old you laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will endure. Yes, they will grow old like a garment. Like a cloak you will change them, and they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will have no end. You know, we know that God laid part of his characters that he, in his nature, he created this by his very word. But that physical, that creation is going to perish. So how do we explain this state in which we describe God? Well, we don't. Romans 3, or excuse me, Romans 11 and verse 33. To truly understand God, we have to be spirit. And that doesn't mean he has not given us knowledge of who he is and even what he is in certain aspects, but our very minds, our physical essence is, is beyond understanding in many ways. Romans 11 and verse 33. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. But that doesn't mean that God is not opening up who he is to his people, to those that have been gifted with his spirit. Like I said, there are just limitations on our physical minds and truly understanding what God is in the spirit realm. Can you truly grasp what it means to be outside of time, to not be bound by the ticking clock that causes all of us to age and to die? To think of this being that has always existed, who always will exist. You know, some of those things we can understand conceptually, but to really understand how that has taken place is beyond us physically. And we know that God extends himself throughout time, throughout eternity, to mankind. We are witnesses of that as we have been given God's Spirit. Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43 and beginning in verse 10. You are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, nor shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and besides me there is no Savior. I have declared and saved, I have proclaimed, and there was no foreign God among you. Therefore, you are my witnesses, says the Lord, that I am God. Indeed, before the day was, I am he. And there is no one who can deliver out of my hand. I work, and who will reverse it? Because of our understanding through his spirit, we can grasp what God is doing for us. You know, eternity, as God is called and as he is described, is defined as timelessness or non-temporal. 
and it refers to the non-existence of time. As I said before, God lives outside of time, and he's not limited by it. Although the universe that he created is created with time, that's outside of God's realm. You know, to, to God, time is like a train moving in a specified direction for a specific purpose. It is a tool that he has created for his needs, for his pleasure. And everything within that tool, everything on that train, is completely under his control. It's a lesson Satan didn't understand. It's a lesson Satan didn't follow after. There is no question, then, as to where, for God's mind, as to where this train and where this tool will end. It ends with his family being born. And we have the prophets, we have his servants, describing exactly what the end times will be like for those that can hear and those that can see. And we have proof of his control that all things were created through him and by him, including time. Revelation 4 and verse 8. <clears throat> Revelation 4 and beginning in verse 8. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within, and they do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they exist and were created, including time, including this mechanism that causes our reality to inch forward second, minute, and over our entire lives. And what's more interesting about his character is that he created this whole realm for you and I, for you and I to grow, for you and I to come closer to leaving the confines of our physical bodies and joining him in the spirit. Hebrews 2 and verse 10. My water's on the left, right, Kaylin? Okay. Hebrews 2 and verse 10. For it was fitting for him, for whom all things and by whom all things, in bringing many sons to glory to make captain their salvation perfect through sufferings. For both he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified are all of one, for which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren. All of these things that we have been given, all of this creation is for us. So understanding just a little bit of what God, who he is, his character by some of those explanations, I'm going to ask another question is what is man's perception of time? through the Bible and even through our own understanding. <clears throat> you know, we have a time machine to look up to into the skies to see what reality looks like, looked like in the past. You know, if you stare up to the moon, the change in the distance between the moon and us for light is imperceptible. But in radio communications, there's a two and a half second delay between when somebody says something on the moon and when it reaches us. The sun, 
We're far enough away it takes eight minutes and 20 seconds for light to reach us. That's why there's some early warning if a huge sunspot or a huge flare pops up, we have minutes before that will actually reach us. The nearest star, Proxima Centauri, is 4.24 years from us traveling at the speed of light. Now, we can't travel at the speed of light, but a spaceship, or um, something called the Deep Space One, conceptually at a maximum velocity of what we can achieve at 56,000 kilometers an hour, traveling to this star, that's four and a half years away traveling at the speed of light, it would take that ship 81,000 years to traverse those four and a half, 4.2 light years between Earth and Proxima Centauri. And that's the closest star within our galaxy, within a multitude of galaxies. God has created this universe even physically beyond our understanding, beyond our grasp to completely travel, to completely understand. We still, basic fundamental laws of physics are still being questioned when new things are seen. Man is really lost in understanding what this all means without God's spirit holding their hands. And for many on the earth, Time is simply passing, simply going by them with no real meaning. Even with the Bible, we see some of those, not necessarily hopelessness, but understanding that man's time doesn't really mean that much compared to spiritual. One idea is frailty of mankind. Psalm 90, verse 1. This is a psalm from Moses. Psalm 90 and verse 1. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations before the mountains were brought forth or ever you had formed the earth and the world. Even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. From beginning to end, as God has been called, the Alpha and the, center, or the, uh, the beginning and the end, with no end. Everlasting to everlasting. Continuing in verse 3, You're, You turn man to destruction and say, Return, O children of men, for a thousand years in your sight, like a yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night. You carry them away like a flood. They are like sheep in the mountain in the morning. They are like grass which grows up. In the morning it flourishes and grows up. In the evening it is cut down and withers. For we have been consumed by your anger, and by your wrath we are terrified. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your countenance. For all our days have passed away in your wrath. We finish our years like a sigh. The days of our lives are seventy years, and if by reason of strength they are eighty. Yet their boast is only labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. You know, man without the understanding that Moses had, that anybody with God's spirit has, is simply passing. But as we read, these things are quickly passing by God, and even with that, there is still a promise to what this tool of time will end with. Also, man's perception is of futility. Ecclesiastes 9 beginning in verse 11. Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 11. I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor bread to the wise, nor riches to men of understanding, nor favor to men of skill, but time and chance happen to them all. For man also does not know his time, 
like fish taken in a cruel net, like birds caught in a snare, so the sons of men are snared by an evil time when it falls suddenly upon them. You know, that is, that idea of futility is something that man can fall into without an understanding of godly, uh, or without a godly understanding guiding him. Back in Ecclesiastes 1, there's also a perception that there's nothing permanent, that it's not understandable. Ecclesiastes 1 and verse 3. What profit has a man from all his labor in which he toils under the sun? One generation passes away and another generation comes, but the earth abides forever. The sun also rises and the sun goes down and hastens to the place where it rose. The wind goes towards the south and turns towards the north. The wind whirls about continually and comes again on its circuit. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. To the place from which the rivers come, there they return again. All things are full of labor. Man cannot express it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. That which has been is what will be. That which is done is what will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which may be said, see, this is new? It has already been in ancient times before us. There is no remembrance of former things, nor will there be any remembrance of things that are yet to come by those who will come after. Frailty, futility. Is non-permanence. You know, spiritual understanding is truly unattainable to the godless. First Corinthians two. And verse thirteen. First Corinthians two and verse thirteen. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural, natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Nor can we know them, because they are spiritually discerned. And yet man comes up with the most foolish answers to time, to wormholes, to multiple universes, multiple realities, trying to express what it's like to be outside of time, what we can do to bend time. And yet, clearly, the Bible, and through God's, the explanation of God's character, we can understand kind of what we can't understand. We understand what God is, what this purpose is, and that is really enough as long as we are on track and we have God's spirit within us, some of these oddities don't need to be explained of why the universe goes on for forever almost as we can grasp it. Your man's perception time seems bleak unless you have that understanding that's not derived from the carnal but from spiritual, from the eternal, from that being that state that he is in of spirit that is not subject to our reality, to this time. So another question I would ask is, what should man be doing with his time? Well, like you would have endless amounts of answers to this, but we know without question Man's time must be seeking God. We must be seeking to fulfill God's will with a small chunk that we have been given to do it in, this small amount of time. Time for us ends. It begins with our birth and ends with our death, and we have 70, 80 years in which to seek after God if he calls us to accept what he has given us. These were the forerunners for 
what this day looks forward to in our far future. You know, Satan, who is spirit, is subject and is trapped by time because of his rebellion. Spirit, as we know, as God exists, is not dependent on time. Time is a creation of God to frame man's existence, to allow mankind to come to a spiritual state. But because of Satan's rebellion, he has a judgment set before him, and he will be removed for eternity because of what he has done. We know when Satan will be judged. We know that he will be held by this physical constraint when we are changed. He eventually will be changed as well into a state that, of that judgment, of being put away by God. And he wants mankind to share in that. That's his greatest gift to mankind, to share in that judgment with him, to exist no longer in our minds. So while we have the time, we thus must be seeking after God, because it is limited for us. Isaiah 55 and verse 6. Isaiah 55 and verse 6, Seek the Lord, or seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. He can only be found when we are alive, when we have had our minds open, when we open that door that is being knocked upon, when we accept what he has given us through, during this limited amount of time. 2 Corinthians 6, to continue with this idea, Second Corinthians 6 and verse 1. We then, as workers together with him, also plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in an acceptable time I have heard you, and in the day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. In Ephesians 5, Verse 14. Ephesians 5 and verse 14. Therefore he says, Awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspect, circumspectly, not as fools but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand that the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine in which dissip is dissipation, but be filled with the, Holy, or with the Spirit. You know, awaken with this limited amount of time that we have to understand what it will be like to be outside of time, to be spirit. You know, our time must be focused on seeking out and building within ourselves that mind of God, that mind that is not bound by time and by physical limits, but that mind that will grow and become unlimited through God's Holy Spirit. And we begin doing that by copying our elder brother, by trying to develop a mind like Christ. Philippians 2 and verse 5. Philippians 2 and verse 5, Let this mind be in you which was also in Jesus Christ. And Jude 20. Once we have that mind, once we're trying to copy our elder brother, we have to sustain it. We have to continue in it. In 
Jude 20, but you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ into eternal life. We have to maintain this understanding that we have been given. You know, we have to fulfill, because there are requirements, we have to fulfill these requirements and answer his calling by action, by moving forward, by not setting and wasting our time, but acting upon our time. Isaiah 61, verse 1. Isaiah 61, and beginning of verse 1, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn. Because mourning is what this life is about. This life doesn't end in perfection while we are alive. Only one, our elder brother, achieved perfection while he was physical. Our goal is to achieve perfection, obviously, when we become spirit. But using our time today, using our what we have been given, what we are learning on a daily basis is that which is going to end with us not being uh, missing out on this great, great opportunity. And it's because we are watching. We're not wasting time, but instead we are watching and hoping for that day that is upon us. Matthew 24 and verse 42. Matthew 24, and starting in verse 42. Watch, therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming, but know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would have come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming in an hour you do not expect. The whole reason why we don't proclaim dates is once we rely on setting dates for God, we start losing the purpose of time, of what we should be doing with it. So we have to be ready to go out and to meet that bridegroom when he knocks, not when we think he should be knocking. You know, what's interesting is our actions and our use of our time here today on earth can lead to the hastening of Christ's return. Second Peter 3, each of us can add to a change in what God, when God is deciding that his son should return by how we are readying ourselves and the church. Second Peter 3, starting at verse 11, Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dis dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat? This physical life, this physical existence will, at some point, be done. It will have been fulfilled, or its purpose will have been fulfilled. So what is God's purpose for time? We've kind of been answering some of that. But in essence, it is to become part of the God family, to become like God. That is the whole purpose of him 
creating man was to create his family. And that purpose for time can only be achieved if we know God, if we have an understanding of who he is and what his character truly is about. John 17 and verse 3. John 17 and verse 3, And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. By Christ's own words, that is eternity, that we will know God, that we'll be become part of his family. And that those type of people that will be given that opportunity have to fulfill certain characteristics. They have to fulfill certain requirements. Humility being one of them. Isaiah 57 and verse 15. Isaiah 57 and verse 15. For thus says the high and the lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy, God inhabits timelessness. Continuing, I dwell in the high and holy place with him who was a, or who has a contrite and humble spirit. To revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. That's who God is going to share his eternity with. You know, we cannot understand nor take part in this plan by our own strength, by our own human grasp of time and what we should be doing with it. Only through weakness in the physical can we hope to come to a place of spiritual strength. That's required. We read about that throughout the Bible, that we have to humble ourselves. We have to be willing to get onto that train and follow after God's lead. If we do, God will give us power. He will enable us to stay with him and follow after him. Isaiah 40, a few chapters back. Isaiah 40 and verse 28. Have you not known, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary, his understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fail, or utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles, and they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. God will give us understanding to continue to fulfill his purpose within each of us. Because time is going to run out for the physical. No amount of towers that man creates, no reliance, on science, nothing that man builds today will change that fact. God's focus is on eternity, and he is building a place for you and I there. Ecclesiastes 3 and 14. Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 14. I know that whatever God does, it shall be forever. Nothing can be added to it, and nothing can be taken from it. God does it that men should fear before him. Trying to recreate what God desires, what God's purpose is, leads to naught. It will not lead to eternity. 
because time is running out for this world. And it's important for us then, who are limited by time, to keep our sights on those things that aren't perishing, because that's the only way we're going to escape the limits of time and age and our physical existence. First John 2. First John 2 and verse 17. And the world is passing away, and the lusts of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. All that's in this world is going to pass away, except for those that have followed and have stayed on track with God. Isaiah 40 and verse 8. Isaiah 40 and verse 8. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. You know, simply believing in Christ isn't enough, enough for, to stop us as physical beings from perishing. The world calls out Christ's name. They state they believe in him, but that is not enough. We must believe the entirety of of the message Christ once delivered in order to have a chance at achieving eternity with God. Second Thessalonians verse or chapter one. Second Thessalonians chapter one and beginning verse five which is manifest evidence of the righteous judgment of God that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you also suffer. We are all suffering for this end, for this kingdom of God. Since it is a righteous thing with God to repay with tribulation those who trouble you and to give you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. In flaming fire taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. These shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power when he comes in that day to be glorified in his saints and to be admired among all those who believe because our testimony among you was believed. There will be judgment, there will be an end and a point when man runs out of time to come to God. Man will be given lots of opportunities, but there is a time when that judgment will happen. When time is going to be fulfilled, when it will be completed. When God's plan is going to finish according to his pleasure and his desires, not our own. Mark 1 and verse 15. That is the direction we all have to look towards, all we all have to walk with diligence to reach. Mark 1 and verse 15. This is Christ talking. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Mankind repents, but they don't believe in the gospel through evidence of them using it and following after the entirety of God's law. So what will timelessness, timelessness be like for you and I? What is eternity going to be like when we are no longer confined by the limits of time. You know, we know that the end of time will come when the plan of God is fulfilled, not a minute before and not a minute past. 
It's not dependent on when we think it will happen. It is dependent on God's will and God's desires. When God sees that we have fulfilled our work, when man has fulfilled, those that follow after God have fulfilled their obligations. When this body is at a state that God wants it. Galatians 4 and verse 3. Galatians chapter 4 and beginning of verse 3. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world, under bondage to time. And we were children and we, weren't, we didn't understand God as we do today. And in verse 4, but when the, full, the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. You know, the place to be in God's family, that opportunity is freely given if we are willing to follow after his laws. If we are willing to follow after those things that God desires and not our own. If we are, there's a wonderful blessing ahead of us. 1 Corinthians 2, beginning in verse 9. First Corinthians 2, beginning of verse 9, But as it is written, Eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. And we can see 13, 15 million or billion years into our past. We can look out as far as our technology can get to us. We can see wondrous things in this universe, things that we can't explain, power of stars exploding that we can't comprehend and nothing even all of that that we can comprehend we can see with our eyes is nothing compared to what God has in store for each of us continuing in verse 10 but God has revealed them to us through his spirit for the spirit searches all things yes the deep things of God but it's because we understand through God's spirit that we can put what we see out there into context. We can understand that there's so much more for you and I than just the beauty of this physical realm. And verse 11, For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. For we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit of Spirit, who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Freely given to us. At a great cost to God, through the death of his son. But because of that, it's freely given to us if we are willing to fulfill his laws and desires. Daniel 12 beginning of verse 1, for one final scripture today, Daniel 1, or excuse me, Daniel 12, and beginning of verse 1. At that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people, over you and I, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered. Everyone who is found written in the book. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some, or some to shame and everlasting contempt. 
Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and forever, without end and without beginning. You know, brethren, the joy that we will take part in is hard for us to grasp. So, brethren, be sure, as we read about there, be sure our names are in that book, that book of life that contains all of those who love God, who follow after God, because eternity is there for each of us.